This is for Polly. Remember the General Agents Smith Foundation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of court guests, I'd like to extend a warm and sincere welcome to all of you who have joined us here tonight for the dinner to honor our new foundation members and Mr. Pocali. General Smith loved this academy and was the first person to leave the quest. They expect the academy to grow and succeed, and we are fulfilling the dream. We, as cadets, are privileged to attend this school, thanks to most of those present here this evening. I thank you. I promise you will not let you down. Welcome to Marine Military Academy. Well, good evening. And I, uh, my name is Joe Weber, and I'm very fortunate to be able to serve as the coach, co-chairman uh, of the Board of Trustees at Marine Military Academy. We had a very nice meeting today, and uh, it's a very special night, as it is every one of these H.M. Smith events. And I just want to say, first and foremost, that uh, tonight is all about the cadets. And uh, I want to thank the cadets for all their hard work, for, for what they've accomplished and achieved. And I'm going to tell you, you look, don't get a big head, but you look absolutely magnificent and squared away in your uniforms. This campus is spotless. We, uh, we, we enjoyed uh, several meals in the mess hall. You could eat off the floor, manners, military bearing, everything, and I, we truly appreciate the effort that you make, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom, as newly noted, we may talk about that in just a few minutes. But I also want to thank the parents who are here of the cadets. If you're a parent of a cadet this year, would you just raise your hand, please? Okay. I, I, I want to thank all of you. You entrust to us, this institution, this school, the most precious resource, the most precious asset in your lives, and that's the, the uh, lives of your young sons. And we, I just want you to know, and I think you do, that we take that responsibility very seriously every day, and uh, we thank you for that. Uh, your sons are the future of this great country, and if there's ever a time in this country where we need young men to stand up and lead us into the future, it's right now. We thank you for entrusting you to us. I want to thank the staff here at MMA. They uh, don't get a lot of credit for what they do, but when they do it, it's, it's, it's great. From the custodial to the landscaping to the people that serve us our food, clean your classrooms, your instructors, your teachers, the administrative support, never probably get the credit that they do, although I know Colonel Hill is very conscious of making sure he takes care of all of you, but none of this would exist tonight on a day-to-day -day basis without the staff here. And I know many of you have been here for many years, and we certainly appreciate what you do here. We couldn't make it without you. To all those here tonight who have contributed financially for this institution, I wish that uh, money wasn't very important, but it is. Money, politics seem to guide everything we do in this world, and I don't think that's ever going to change. But what a, what a tremendous investment when you look around and see the products that we're getting in these young men here at this institution. So all of you that have been so generous, on the board, off the board, family, friends of this great uh, institution, we thank you very, very much. And finally, to the cadets, one last time, without patronizing you, or again giving you a big head, uh, I just want to tell you that what you're doing and what you're going through is a little different than maybe what some of the young men and women of your age are going through in their education in high school, in middle school. But as all I want to tell you, if there's anything that, that you achieve, it's worth working hard for. And you're making sacrifices and you're putting yourself into an environment with some discipline, some regimentation. You're finding very early that life isn't just all about you. It's about your friends, it's about your buddies, it's about the comrades that you're around. It's about achieving something together as a team. It's hard work, mental, physical. It's having to do things that you don't want to do. And you're going to find out one of these days that I think perhaps the greatest attribute of a leader, be it in the military, be it in business, be it in politics, in whatever, whatever you choose to be in your life, it's 
to get people to do things that they don't want to do. And I think you are going to get a great education here. You're going to be well prepared for college. And I'm going to put in a plug for you. I, I work at a tier one research university at the Road College Station, Texas. In the fall, we'll have 2,300 young men and women come to this university and strap on the uniform of member of the Corps of Cadets. Ten percent of the freshmen entering Texas A&M are choosing to join the Corps of Cadets. There's a reason for that. Not necessarily to make a career out of the military, but to attain the leadership skills that you're going to need to go out in the world and be successful. Regimentation and discipline, camaraderie that you're going to need to go out and be a doctor, lawyer, coach, teacher. An officer, whatever you want to be. It starts right here at this institution. So hang in there. We're very proud of you. We love you. You're doing tremendous things. You make us all so very, very proud. And it's an honor for me to be able to hear, be here and serve on this board. And I know I speak for my coach here, Joe Pollard, and everyone else on our board. Thank you for this evening. Semper Fox. Smith Foundation was named for one of the most famous commanders during World War II in the Mississippi Campaign. General Smith, until his death, was a strong supporter of education and one of the first members of the Board of Trustees of the Marine Military Academy. The foundation was formed in 1970 by Major Johnson as a means of expressing the official gratitude of the Academy for the extraordinary financial support given towards its growth and development. Through the years, we recognized our most generous donors by inducting them into the agent's foundation themselves. These fellows have made contributions in excess of $100,000. They are, they are authorized to wear the blue razor with the MMA press and are given to the gold watch. A number of general agents and fellows are present this evening, and I'd like them all to stand up and be recognized. Please stand. This year, a new fellow is being inducted. Not only a financial supporter of MMA, but he's also, as I said before, one of our own and a lot of us. And I ask Mr. John Klein to come up and have a seat, please. Uh, I'm going to talk about things for a minute, but first, uh, since this is the last time I'm up here, I'd like to thank my fellow board members for allowing me to serve as chairman. I'm honored that you allowed me to serve, uh, and it's a lifetime experience for a lot of you members. I'd like to thank my wife, Christine, and my daughter, Caroline. Caroline's first visit in the day after about 16 years uh, of being on board, and I'm glad I'm proud of her here, and we can give them a round of applause to see you,
Sorry. I had dyslexia. I'm proud of it. I had learning disabilities. I went from 2.6 over 4.0. This school helped me in my life to this. I want to encourage you to overcome adversity. I came from a dysfunctional family. I'm proud of that. I overcame that. If you're a cadet that's struggling with your GPA, you're struggling, you're a CSU. I said it many years ago when I first joined the board. Keep struggling. That's the place of the disorder and you're going to more of it. I could have sat back like this, moved on. So I'm a very good student. I suffer some learning disabilities. I don't come from money. You know what I did? I took the positive. I went on the temple. I got out to be a scholar athlete. I went on to become a problem officer. Fourteen postgraduates came to the Marine Military Academy. Get the Naval Academy. Two of us didn't get in. That's who. Me. So if you're struggling right now, you came down here, you remember that. I now run a $100 million company. I hired, fortunate that I hired the Academy graduates like Tom Blomgowski is on the board. It's overcoming adversity. And I'm encouraging you cadets that are struggling, that are here, that are down here, not perfect students, put your head down and overcome it. It's very rewarding. What I don't want you to do is just try to prove to the world that you can do it. Do it for your own inner fulfillment. Do it for your own inner fulfillment. Reach your potential. That is why when Colonel Hill called me, he said, Tony, I need to be a great speaker. When you hear a municipality story, it's truly amazing. Some of Hollywood's most important inspirational movies were born from the world of sports. One in particular inspired not only sports fans, but anyone with a pulse. In 2006, Walt Disney Pictures continued their triumphant tradition of motivating sports stories with the release of movie investment. It's a stirring football drama starring Mark Wilbur, who I think my daughter and wife love, love as best of how an ordinary, listen to this, an ordinary guy who against all odds takes a shot at every fan's fantasy of going from the grandstands to the ground. And as he chased his dream, he went after it. It has been described as how these odds of, of achieving this wild, wildest lifelong dream of playing for the Eagles as one in a gazillion. Chase your dream, he did. It was in 1976, he was 30 years old. That's old man in NFL terms. A teacher and a coach, he gives back. At his high school on a part-time bartender, I don't want to encourage that, <laughs> and a diehard Eagles fan, described an act on a whim and a dare and entered, entered the unprecedented public tryouts for his beloved Eagles. Vince, at my request, went to the uh, Disabled Veterans of America golf outing for me and formed a special relationship with an amputee. He still stays involved in that organization. He's doing me a favor to be our guest speaker there. He's co-chairman of the Spina Bifida Association and also for the retired citizens of Bora Hospital, which is a hard hospital outside of Philadelphia, the Multiple Cirrhosis Society, and the American Heart Association. He has also worked with Eagles to fly for leukemia. You should see events of these young kids with no hair that have leukemia. Every year, Vince charges the nice fee for his speaking service. Not here for the men. When I call Vince for a charitable contribution, he shows up, and he's always shown up for Eagles fight for the team for us. He helps with the Police Athletic League, the Special Olympics, the Maxwell Football Club, the Sunshine Foundation, near near, near, near some of our cadets, the Boy Scouts, and the Variety Club. Vince has received the chapel of the Four Chaplains Humanitarian Award that's where my wife and I went to Temple University. That's where four chaplains in World War II went down on the same ship, and they gave their life preservers out to the troops when that ship was going down. The United Way Toll Award, the JC's Distinguished Service Award, and as mentioned in 1978, was a finalist for the Brian Wizard White Award, presented annually to the NFL player who shows the highest level of community awareness and involvement. 
I know Vince personally, he's a good family man, good American, gives back. He flew here at my request on vacation. He left yesterday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning to get here. With that, I'd like to play the trailer and bring Vince up. Thank you very much. Every Sunday, millions of fans experience the power and rush of NFL football. But in 1976, Body kill me! for the Philadelphia Eagles and a fan named Vince Papali. Vince, we've had some rough times, you and me. Bob, things are going to turn around. It was time to do something. Welcome the new head football coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, Mr. Dick Vermeil. That had never been done before. This coming Saturday, Philadelphia Eagles will hold open tryouts. Now. You got to try out this weekend. Nobody's trying out. He's 30 years old for one thing. The Eagles' biggest fan. So the one where Vince runs around everyone. Rubbish! Hey. Let me go! Hey. is about to take a shot at a dream. Even if you're down there for one hour, you're down there. Who brings you out here? Would it be an eagle, baby? How we doing, AC? I've seen glaciers move faster. Where'd you play your college ball? I didn't play college ball. Do you mind me asking you how old you are? If you don't mind me asking how old you are, coach. Shocking news from today's tryout. The Eagles have decided to invite one man to training camp, Philly's own Vince Papali. In 1976. To make this roster, you must throw away all fear. A 30-year-old bartender. Excuse me, my name is spelled wrong. Nothing personal. What is it really going to matter? Who played only one year of high school football. You ain't going nowhere! Tried to become the NFL's most unlikely rookie. How am I supposed to run all this? You can't wear quarterback pads. You won't last a week wearing those. Nothing personal. It's really going to matter. Inspired by the incredible true story. The Vincent! You need to show me more than that, Papali? This summer... You have a story, my friend. One man is pursuing an entire city's dreams. Papali is not making this team, and I am not going to be the laughingstock among the owners. When I told you not to get your hopes up, didn't mean that I wasn't. Mark Wahlberg, Greg Kinnear. Let's go to work. Invincible. Hey, what are you doing? Are 
Are you doing good? Thanks, Sean. Thanks so much for that great introduction. Wait for the longest introduction I've ever had. That's pretty cool, though. Oh, man. You gotta love Tony's fashion. Well, I mean, that's one thing I think I noticed most when I came on campus today was fashion. I wrote one here. Uh, there was one guy who was particularly passionate, which is Dallas Cowboys. It's uh, Carlos, our little piece of work. But, uh, yeah. You gotta love it, you know, and when I came in here, I realized how many Cowboys fans are in the neighborhood, by the way. Oh, yeah, have No, they still have a big Cowboy country here. I saw them sweeping with the enemy, you know, so, whatever it is. But it, it, it's great to be here and to be a part of them, and, 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 and the great work was given out. Congratulations to you, John. And uh, thank you so much, Carl, and hopefully I'll be in the campus and having the opportunity to talk to the cadets and also the board of directors and everyone else here. So that's what it's all about, you know, that's what my story is about. Is there, are there any dreamers out here? Is that even, there we are, I know it's a dream, you know, there it is right here, you know, and what was done in World War II and, and it come here and all the wars that we've had and, and the dreams are kept alive because of all the soldiers out there, that's basically what it's all about, it's, it's not the very good dream that we have. The story that we have, we can do anything. But have you ever had that situation where somebody's told you that you can't do that? Have you ever had that happen to you that you've had the opportunity to overcome that? And, and, and when that happens, it's what we usually don't like to call it's our invincible moment. And a lot of people like to think maybe my invincible moment might be when a movie was made about me. Uh, I don't know if that would be true. Has anybody had a movie made about them lately, by the way? No, nobody? Oh, where are you two? Nothing like that? You're kidding. My gosh. Well, the master is like that movie made about you. You know, Hollywood comes up. They say, you're the guy that they're going to do a spend 40, 50 million dollars on. Why me? And, and I don't know. I, I don't know why me, but it's hard to try to explain what I touched on that. Try to explain to you, what if this movie is all about? What if this invisible thing is invisible? What it's all about? It's all about your will from within to allow you to do something when people basically say that you can. But when somebody tries to put you in a box or put you in a category and say, you know what? TPA is as high as it should be. You don't come from the right neighborhood. You don't come from the right family. You don't have the right pedigree. A lot of us parents here have been told that we didn't have the right resume. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not big enough. You're not fast enough. You're not this enough. You're not tough enough. But the fact that you overcome all those things, that's what the invisible moment is all about. And, and I know several people here that's not what invisible moment is tomorrow. Might have been the fact that uh, there are Eagle Scouts. Are there some Eagle Scouts here in this? Uh, in the audience? How about Eagle Scouts? I know. There's one or two or three. Santa, I think we should applaud and, and give these to these young men a great round of applause. Oh, 
years. I said, where's the car yet? And the people say, well, the car gets you close. I said, the car gets you close. I hit the residuals on that movie. That's what I got to do. And then, you know, and then, and then they make a movie about you. And then think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Who's on the plane? I mean, everybody in this room has done something where they're worthy of having a movie made about them. You know? Think about it. Who's on the plane? Well, you can't do something yet. I mean, go ahead and who's the person who's on the plane? You know? I thought the best person who would be playing me was, was this guy from the X-Men. Hugh Jackman. Right? Like, Hugh Jackman. He would have been good at me. All the guys, all the guys in the neighborhood would say, yeah, you know what it's going to be? So we need to And then I get a guy, I get a guy like Mark Wahlberg, and, and he's the guy that played me. And, uh, and Mark was just a, such a phenomenal guy. What a character to be. But I had no idea who Mark Wahlberg I had no idea who Mark Wahlberg was. And uh, as it turns out, uh, I have to call my buddy, Rocco Santa Rita. You know, he's a real person in Philadelphia. I said, yo, Rock. I said, yeah, there's this guy, Mark Wahlberg, playing me. And he does this typical Italian thing, like, you know, he's supposed to, right? And he's our, you know, he boy like, oh, not all. I said, you know who this guy is? He said, you've never heard of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you like that, right? Any Wahlberg fans out here? Yeah, we got Fans out there, well, that's what it is. Marky Mark and a funky bunch. You know, so that's what that's what it was. And then he did a great job there. But somehow I guess it's why I'll get, I'll get to it eventually. But Mark Wahlberg was the guy who did it. That slide up there basically is said something. I, I, I can't just stand behind the podium. I'm not going behind the podium. See, this, this, this is what it's all about right here. This is the dream. Look at that kid up there, 14 years old. Basically, about the same age as you young cadets right now. You know, and, and all I wanted to do was to be a Philadelphia Eagle. And, and then, you know, I got the shot. I see some ticket holder in the stands. Had that opportunity to play for those rough touch Marlins. You saw the movie. Yeah, that was all part of it. And then, and why would I be smiling uh, after some of those training camps when you had to play for me over There was, you know, I, I had that chance to, to live the dream. And basically, and it's all about the dream. And, and but they done as, as I mentioned it, you know, a lot of sports movies have been made by people who had the dream. And there's some dreamers out there, you know, Rocky, you remember the Titans. And every one of the people that you look at, the Rookie and, and the Miracle, and, and all the Miracles, without a doubt, my favorite because of uh, the one thing, because of the USA thing. And I just love the Miracle, and I'm a good friend with, uh, with Mike Ruzioni. And, uh, you know, it, it's all good. But every one of these guys, Every one of these guys, every one of these people, every one of these teams had some sort of dream. And, and then it was my buddy Ruby. You know, uh, you know he, Ruby, it took 10 years to do that movie, and I was saying, you know, Ruby, I mean, you know, you're going to have somebody to play with a movie. You don't have a hobbit playing me. You know, you, you, you got to have, but, uh, you know, they're all the dreamers, and that's what it's about. So you never know. Someday somebody's going to make a movie about it. And there it is. And there's my guy, Mark. Uh, he, he's as cool as he gets. Uh, yes, we did hang out with him all the time. Uh, we, we played a lot of golf. We went out socially. Uh, he had learned how I speak. People tell me I have an accent. Do I have an accent? Oh, I'm very sad. Don't worry. Do you have an accent? Oh, yes, you have an accent. I mean, you know, how's this for you? Is this so for you? Yo, how are you doing? Is that, is that, that would be, uh, that's your Philly stuff. But if, if, if you pay attention to the, uh, to the trailer real quickly, uh, that little point on Grady Free, right in front of the car, right toward the end, pick up the ball, that's my son, Dave. That's it. And he and listen, that's my daughter Gabriella. And uh, Gabriella's now 18, but he's 15. Gabby's the girl who threw the ball in the street to try to get her brother killed. So that's the thing that happened, you know. So that's all that. But you know, to have a guy like Mark Walker and if this guy were to play, uh, it is as good as it gets. And of course, you know, the movies, they like to mess around a little bit with some of their characters. And I will say that the movie had to be portrayed as a part time bartender and a substitute teacher. We're trying to profession, certainly, but actually I was teaching at my alma mater, Amber High School, in suburban Philadelphia, head track coach, assistant football coach, and working my master's degree. Why? Why was I coaching? Why was I teaching? Why was I working on a master's degree? Because there was somebody in my life that was very important to me, that was my coach, my teacher, and my mentor. And if it wasn't for that person, I never would have gotten to where I got. I never would be standing here talking to you. never would have gotten my education. He's the guy who helped me through it. And I know that you're all have been affected by everybody here in that respect. So, you know, that's a little bit of where I was when I was teaching and coaching. There's my memoir right there. But, and then the movie came out, you know. Oh, my God. You know, the rest, you can't even imagine what it's like. But they made that movie about you. Get ready for it. Uh, it's a synopsis.
Tommy and Rolf said, I'm a little bit below you, right off the planet, and, and you're just not prepared for all the things that happen. And so many different ways. But I'll tell you the thing to me that has gotten me the most, that has written me the most, is the response, the response I get by so many people that walk up and say, you know what, I saw your movie and it made me feel good. I was a little bit down, it made me feel better. I get emails and letters every day by people saying, you lifted me up. And, and, and that's the thing I'm most proud about. And that's the thing that really carries me because basically what it's all about is it's about impact. That's about everything we do. Everything that you're involved with is about impact. And it's also good about being part of a team. And can you exhibit more better, more better, is that the English language? Can you exhibit better teamwork than some guys out there on the, uh, people out there on the, uh, on the river just showing way and that point? That's what it's about. That's what you're about. That's what the service is about. That's what the Marine Corps is about. That's what MMA is about. It's about teamwork. And it's about the impact that are being made on you right now. But in return, it's going to be the impact, and we're not talking about the impact in a physical way, the impact that you're going to have so many other, other ways by going out and helping people and being a part of that. And I thought what I'd do is I'd share with you a little bit, excuse me, of some impactful things that have happened with faith. The little boy out here is named Fred, and his father didn't make it. And Fred's father didn't make it from colon cancer. I'm a colon cancer survivor. 11 years would be this, uh, this Memorial Day. How did it happen to me? It didn't happen to him. I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. This kid writes me all the time. I, I, I have to pay attention to his grades. And somehow he became a surrogate dad. So how does a guy like me, born in 1946, become a surrogate dad with a kid that's like nine years old? What did it happen? And there's a young man up in the way. I said, it's Alex. And Alex came to me. And he woke up to me one time. Oh, he's got muscular dystrophy, if you couldn't tell from the cards he was walking on. And Alex comes up to me and says, hey, kids, they ever tell you that you weren't good enough to play the field off the Eagles? They tell you that you never make it happen? And I said, you kidding me? They told me all the time. He said, well, guess what? They tell me I'll never walk again. He says, you know what? If you make the field off the Eagles, I can walk. I can walk. That's impact. Don't ask me how it happened. How the part of it. I'll tell you what, I'll take you on. I see those men with him right up there. I met them in San Antonio a couple of years. They're all guns and superstar metal winners. That's what it's all about. That's the impact. They're the men who are out there protecting our dream. And when they signed on with the greatest team on earth, USA, they didn't have a, they, they didn't have a press conference. They didn't give a signing bonus. There were no guarantees. They just did. They did it. Why? Because they're proud of their country and because they want to serve. That's what you're all about. Whether you want to serve or have an education, it's all about impact. And the people have impacted you the most. And think about it. Who's the person right now, whether you're a cadet right now or an adult, who's the person that's had the most influence on your life up to this particular point? There's three guys right there that have been very impactful on me. One is my guy. That's my dad. One with the eye right there. That's Kingy. That was his nickname. So the guy in the movie Kingy, that's the real Kingy. The guy in the right hand side gave me the opportunity. We've been talking about opportunity all night. That's my man, Coach Nick Field. And my mentor, Work for him, my coach, my coach, Tony's coach, coach right down there. That's my coach, George Corner. He's the guy that brought it in there. So I'm trying out for the Eagles. They're busting me. You can't wear quarterback pads out there. You're going last week. And like I said to the guy, it was true. I said, it's really mad. How many of us have had that dream? How many of us have had that desire to do something that everybody says is unreachable to them? To them, so they tell you you can't. Because if you succeed, that validates their failure and insecurities. People are unhappy when other people are unhappy. That's why they're happy when they see other people unhappy. Nothing personal is really going to matter. They can't, we, can't, we make it happen. We make it happen. We get the last half to get it done. I got the last half to get it done. It's right there. Pro Football Hall of Fame is hanging in Canada, Ohio. So I'm pretty proud of that. I'm sick of anybody to say it's very much as well. I don't know what to say. You have me out of time. What can I say? So that's the ultimate heat. You know, so you have to shut the fire. I got my heat. So and, and we, we have a little something also in football called, uh, called Who's Nuts. You know, uh, we used to, when we were out there, we would grab somebody out on the field. We'd give out t-shirts. They were the Who's Nuts award. So uh, you're all nuts, and it's a great thing that you got. So that's that's the who's nuts to sacrifice that he got. And that's it, the last thing, and that's what that's about. So here it is, 1976. Trying out for the Eagles. I'm going to play so bad. A season ticket holder. Ten years. No college football experience. Can't do it, 
Papali will probably be remembered as the free agent walk-on who defied football logic. But above all, his legacy will live on with the men he played with and the city he inspired. Vince will always have a special place in this town because he did something that the other guys couldn't do. I mean, he took the passion of the Philadelphia fan, put it in a jersey, and threw it into the wedge on Sunday. <laughs> I think he's going to be remembered as the physical manifestation of every fan's desire going back generations. But it wasn't the kind of history that you're going to be able to look up in a record book. It's the kind of history that you're going to find in the heart of a city and in the people that go to the games. And in a sense, that's the greater history because that's the one that lives on. People are going to remember him and his number and his desire and how they felt watching him play longer than they're going to remember guys that caught more passes and scored more touchdowns. Because to them, what Vince did said more about who they were as fans and as a city than anything else. And that's what his legacy is going to be. But I don't think this is the end of Vince. I think it's the beginning. I think this movie is going to tell a story that everybody can get a little piece of and really bring it right into their own heart and say, you know what, I've been dealing with that. I was ready to give up. I think I can do something. In 1976, I dreamt of becoming a Philadelphia Eagle. And now, 30 years later, people are calling me invincible. Don't stop living your dream. I was 13, 14 years old. I was such a need of somebody. 
The story we told you, Jimmy and Mel asked her to get her back with a That's an idea, right? So the thing to make And then she had another nervous breakdown. And they gave her insulin shock. They went, I'm your age, guys. You did that. I'm telling you, part of the scenes. My mom is an alcoholic and a prescription drug addict. My mom and dad are fighting at home. I wanted to escape in the worst way. I didn't know which way I was going to go. I was just ready to make the turn to the dark side. And comes my coach. He steps in, takes me under his swing. Why would he do that? It turns out, somebody in his time is something the same thing as my mother did. He understood. He was my mentor. Who's your mentor? Who's your senior? That's what he was to me. And that's my coach right there, George Warner. Come on out to the football team, Vince. Oh, coach, everybody told me I was too small. I went out before they said I was too small. You're not too small. I was 5'5", 165 pounds, and I was a senior in high school. Went out to the football team. Why not leave me together and touch that reception? How'd that happen? Somebody believed in me. That's why. That's why. All you coach is that. All you have to do is believe in the person you're coaching. It's amazing how much you get out of it. And then he says, what happened to the drag team? What happened to the drag team? And I wound up, hopefully, you know, what the hell was the world's record? Never went out and never pulled it before. That's what my father said. I got that scholarship to college. And that was my invincible moment. When I gave my dad that scholarship dad, I said, we're going to college, man. And he hugged me and he kissed me and he cried. Father said, he never did that, ever, because he was a tough Italian guy. That's what his dad was, right? Never did that. And he hugged me and he says, I never told you this how much you meant to me and how much I love you. He says, we're going to be together as a team forever and ever. And we were. And that was it. And that's the story. You know, and I did, you know, the rest of the piano you know, was history. They made the movie. You know, the movie's all about opportunity. And it's about taking advantage of opportunity. So the guy like Dick Vermeer, and some of the great quotes he had up there. I was, I was going to tour around the campus, guys. And I was just thinking, what if we like out there doing some of the PT that you're doing? And the small training team, it's not like that, but I know it got a lot harder. And for real, I was saying, nobody ever drowned in sweat. How sophisticated is that? Oh my God, that's sick. You know, where the greatest report you give yourself is knowing that you did your best. How about that? That was pretty good. But the drowned in sweat thing is, I saw a guy nine in Thailand. Nine in Thailand. There's too much entitlement going out there. You've got to work it. You've got to pay the price. That's what that's about. And then, opportunity is worth for a person exactly what the preparation they need to make. You've got to have a lot of opportunities out there, and it's all this, uh, how you're prepared. I was never prepared when I was told that I had cancer. I was never prepared for that, I'll tell you that, when they walked up to me, doctors told me to sit down, and well, no, that's not a good one. You know, how does that happen to me? Well, it happened. If there's anybody in this room, by the way, I know who's just finished up there. Anybody in this room who's 50 years old, and you haven't got that test, you know, the, 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 the test, the colonoscopy, you know, oh, let me take the test, man, I'll just like give it to the front. Just take the test, you might like it, it's, it's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know what they'll find. The last time I had one done, they found my father's shoe. So, you know, it's, it's, so take a run at that thing. Now, I wasn't prepared for the biggest sin I took. I figured I'd throw this one in for you guys to do that. So, it's every way to say, it was a couple of times you completed this. What is that for the way, which is not by my sake? You know what an ear holding is? An ear holding is when you're in your helmet, as opposed to having a face mask here, it's when the ear hole is right over your eye, because you can smack around like this, right? And I was hit by this guy, Charles Stokes, from USC, who was playing for the Oakland Raiders. I was just trying to hit Cliff Branch, coming out, I was trying to zoom in on him, and he turned that part, and it just happened. And boom! And he went out of the ear hole. And he said, you know, 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 you that would be a perfect getaway home, you know, so that's, that was the biggest sense that I ever took that So, good, good fun stuff. All right, here we go. Go ahead and get into the end. Go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of the This is what it's all about. This is why you're here. The reason you're in MMA, guys, is because you were going to get the opportunity to have your potential fulfilled. How old coach was potential? Well, Mr. Lombardi said, there's something that ain't done yet. Coach Real was 
fine. He said, no vegetables, but get coaches fired. <laughs> How cool is that? He also said it was great waste. It's the greatest waste out there. We know what it is. It's anything that would be possible. It's being a vegetable. It's not being a vegetable at all. And I don't care what age you are, what level you're at, where you want to go, it's never to make it in the game. He can't do it. I mean, we're here, but there's always something up there. You know, and and I ain't going to get up there. You know, I ain't going to reach that potential and, and get to that. And, and this is why I put together for you. I thought you might like it. It's that you can be invisible. And this is a very simple idea. First of all, First of all, you got to visualize whatever the target of the goal is, right? If you can't see it, see what it takes to smell, it'll never happen. Next thing is, make an impact. Make an impact. Be part of something out there. Be impactful. Hit the F5 button. You know all the what the F5 button is out there, right? This is the refresh button. When you get frustrated, I don't care what age it is, but this is the refresh button. Take a step back, take a deep breath, you know, just recycle, and hit the refresh button. And when you get frustrated, you can't get further. Sometimes you just have to go back and go to the fundamentals. Take a run to the fundamentals. Do the things you know best. Take those fundamentals. Take a risk. Risk is so very important. Make sure you have the safety net every once in a while. But you take that risk and make sure you surround yourself with good people. That's why you're here. You're surrounded by not good people. You're surrounded by awesome people. And that's what that's about. Surround yourself with those awesome people. And the relationships that you have right now, different countries, different states, everything, develop those relationships. And develop the relationships that you have everywhere you are because it's going to carry your life. And look at what's happened right now. All the board of directors are people have come back and they've given because of what was happening here when they were younger at the time they needed it the most. And that's what it's about, those relationships. And they have, oh, what's one more degree? Well, here's one more degree. Is, what happens when you boil water? And you have, and you try to boil water, you're 211 degrees. What, what happens? Nothing, right? What you do is waste energy. Time is about that. What you do is waste energy, right? But what happens if you go one more degree? You got speed. You got power. You got something to work with, right? So go in the extra degree. Make extra effort a part of your personality. I know that the drill instructors, the DIs are in you all the time. You don't think they're doing that just because they're going to be sophisticated. They know what's in you. They know what you can do and how to pull that from you in the art. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. But, but, but it's all there. It's, it's for the best of you. Look at how the, look at how the alumni turned out. You know, I mean, what a great thing. Have a synergy between your mind and body. Well, that's what this is all about. And then leadership and being part of that. Find out what your role is. Start thinking about what your role in life is going to be. And then be passionate about it. That's what it's about, Jack Carlos. Because he moves on a losing team that now is not worth very passionate about. Yeah? Attitude is something that can persevere, never quit. The more you learn, the more you are, baby. I'll tell you something, if you don't keep your nose to the books, it isn't going to happen when you want to go out there and make the dollars. Get as much of a degree as you possibly can and simply be the best you can be. Be the best you can be. Have you heard about good crafts? Well, Did they mention you before? <laughs> when you're going to have this goal, people are going to try to bring you down. If you try to take that top crab out of it, out of the top crab, you know what the other crab's going to do? You're going to be snapping your fingers on it, just quick away. And you try to pull that crab down. You know why? Because that crab gets weight, it becomes a deeper green crab. They don't want that to happen. Because then that crab becomes successful, they're unsuccessful. It's as simple as that. You're going to have people in your way all the time that are going to be doing that to you. Stay away from them. Don't listen to them. Stay true to your course. Be passionate about what you're doing and beware of the bucket of crabs. And be individual and an 18. Make sure you've got a well-defined dream, goal, and vision. We talked about that. Are you a character player? And can you be trusted? And can you be trusted? And the core values that you have here at the Academy are, are so very important, all working around trust and character and leadership. That's what it is. All right? Oh, I figured I'd lay a little bit out here. You know, Tony's talking about this time. That's, that's my team out there. I'm very proud of them. That's my Gabrielle. Um, and uh, she's 18 years old there. I go to Syracuse, which is really cool. So she stopped to try and get a part of the old, she's going to go to Syracuse to be broadcasting. And my son, Teddy, um, he's, uh, he wears our way to three. Real cool story about that. He tried out for the All-Star football game, a uh, football team, and he made it, and he came up in our way to three. We keep playing on the road. That's pretty cool. And he says, uh, what do you mean? He says, you wear my number. He says, get that. He says, it's not your number. It's Wes Walker's number. You know, so. <laughs> 
you taught me a little lesson in humility. A little lesson in humility. You know, we believe, we believe that dreams are not live on the sidelines. It's as simple as that. We all have our dreams. But you've got to get it out of your head. You've got to get out on the field and play it. It's as simple as that. And, and, and get out and, and give it to the community. Be a part of the community. And that's what's so very important to everything you do. Because givers get. What do they get? They know what they get. They get me. And that's what they get. And there's a picture of my buddy out there. saying it's Gary Pop. And he always said that the last hour, if you get involved in fundraisers and that kind of stuff, maybe that, that dollar that you raised could be the last hour to find a cure or find hope for whatever you're trying to do. Uh, we lost him, but always be in our heart. So it's as simple as that. Now, I'm going to give you this, and this is what I'm going to leave you with. This is called the White Knuckle. And I'm going to forego doing the video, but I'm going to do this White Knuckle thing. This is what you're all about. The White Knuckle in the movie, there was a scene at the end, when, you know, the, the sketches were all the sketches were all they hit the guy right at the very end, and that, that was the play. What was that all about? Well, earlier in the movie, the guy says, hey, look, man, I'm tired of seeing you get killed out there. And if you can beat somebody's knuckles by if they're leaning forward and they're charging, you'll see that the, the knuckles become a lighter shade of color. And if there, if there isn't any way on it, the knuckles go back to their own skin tone. And he says, you just gotta learn how to read your knuckles. They're, they're knuckles. And then, I thought that when I started doing that, I became a little bit more successful in that one particular drill. It wasn't getting killed all the time as you're trying to do that. But in life, with everything you're doing, whether it's taking a test or whatever it might be, or any shots you have, it's all about this. It's the way you know, you've got to charge. You have to be smart about it. You can't always be charging full forward unless you have some intelligence. Or you have an analyzed adaptive team. What's the analyze part? Get to know as much about the challenge as you can. Study it. Know everything you can about it. And then adapt. What's the adaptive? Well, you have to have different plans. You have to have different attack styles, whatever it might be. I'm not all familiar with that, but I know about football. You have to have a lot of everyone to survive. You have to have to adjust. You have to be nimble on your feet and be able to make that adjustment. And then finally, it's just get it done and achieve. So that's what the white knuckle was about. Analyze, adapt, and achieve. And there we go. And right there, this is what I like to leave you with this. And this is what we talked about. And there's potential great ways. To, oh, by the way, that one right there, there, there there's the last laugh, and one on the right was uh, just being introduced to the crowd in Philadelphia when they said that I was the, uh, the best special team I've ever played in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles for now 80 years. You know what that's like? People say you can't do it. I mean, if, if anybody can be an example of that, here it is. Just use me, whatever. Because I was the one that said it couldn't be done. And my wife, by the way, the Giants fan, and it was, uh, that they said it was a giant shame. My wife actually was a member of the USA World Gymnastics team. That was a little bit of hope. So there it is. And it's all about the dream. And, and I'm going to leave you with this poem. And it goes simply like this. All fast dreams, for a dream's time, life is like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. But I'm going to just hang on to it. And uh, everything will be fine. And make sure that you're willing to pay the price. And then, uh, Finally, I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much, Carla. Everybody here, Andy, I don't know where she is somewhere around. Uh, she's really helped me a great deal in setting up this presentation and giving me the intelligence I needed. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, you think I would have to say it would be anticlimactic. I'm so fired up right now, ready to re enlist. <laughs> you know, a number of years ago, uh, the Green Military Academy founded the Eagle Team Leadership Award. And this award is given to someone who is a leader, who's made an impact on what I consider our most valuable asset, as General uh, Weber said, our youth and has contributed significantly to this great nation. We would like tonight to present the EU team of leadership to the UNS for all that you have done.
uh, wrong book of wealth, and I knew I was getting something, but I didn't say anything like that. That would be this great family. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I I have something for you as well. Um, I, I would like to give you um, a copy of the movie Invincible. If I don't know, uh, you are invincible. And also, I uh, I that you have this great theater here that holds 1,100 people. And uh, what better movie to show in that theater than Invincible? So uh, here at Super School, and we're going to go to the academy. And it's going to be fun. So and and then anyway, we have a couple of things we're going to get out. Master Sergeant Krauss, where are you, sir? A A G L E S Eagles. Real Eagle fan on campus. There you go, sir. Thank you very much.